pour a small amount of whatever, whatever I'm going to finish in here. And I dip it, maybe soak it, run around to the other side. Keep one, one, one piece uh, open. Set it on my table here. Hold it here and then do where I was before and then touch up this. This has got the benefit, it's got a little Lazy Susan thing down there. You have both sides, so you can kind of look at it, get in the light right. Uh, if I didn't have this, I'd be sitting it on these guys. The, magic of the, the, the benefit of the three is it's all, it's, it will always seep. Now, I, I made a bunch of these, and I brought them, and I hope you guys will take them home with you. I bought a bunch of these too. Please take some of these home. I have more than I need. You're welcome to, to, to take some. <coughs> And, and then I, I try not to put this back in the can. Sometimes I put too much in there and I get stingy and I put it back in there. But it's better not to put it back in the can. Because when I bring it out here, it'll get contaminated with dust particles or whatever. It's better not to. That's why I put it in here, trying to estimate the amount I need so that it minimizes the wastage. But you're probably better to not put it back in the can. And then I'm done with this. <coughs> it out there, it'll dry in a couple hours safely. So this is this is handy for pretty much anything. I can take these things out and put bigger things on. But uh, I like my little little, uh, little lazy Susan thing. And then it sits here and dries overnight. I just let it dry overnight. Do my sanding job. Between layers, put another one on there. And you don't have to sand between coats because if you do it right, it's going to build up a whole lot. And then uh, I do my final process like we talked about before. So. Please take some. Thank you, Bobby. And don't worry about getting a finish on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I mentioned the, uh, the two items. The next is uh, this is scalded maple. And this, this had a lot of variety to it, and, and it had some funky spots. Some, some of these little dark areas kind of look like a feature. Well, they're darker because more finish absorbed in the funky spot. I could not get that to fill. Put this, I uh, uh, started out with a lot of beach oil because I wanted to penetrate, get as much contrast as I could. I found that there were some dead spots, dull spots in there. No what I did, like two or three coats of uh, a white bond poly, still dull. Still soaking in. Never saw that before. So I cheated. And I got some regular clear poly, an artist brush. And I dabbed on each one of those. To fill those suckers. So that I could get, get it to the point where I could do that and that finish and then buff it to the level I wanted more evenly. It wasn't, didn't look like a feature, it looked like a defect. And I probably did that two or three times. Then you sand it flat. It's easy enough to do because they're not very big. That's the top part. Bottom is, is a piece of blood glue. And if you look in there, you'll see that there's a little bit of change down there in the middle. Huh? <laughs> By the time I got to do the bottom, I started to dish it out a little bit until it's a bad hole. So, but my wife says she likes it better with the foot. And the contrast between the red and the green seems to work pretty well. But I was excited that it has not just the texture of uh, the holes down here. These crazy lines I've never seen before. I have no idea what they are. Yeah, it's got a lot of I like girls. It's pretty. It's small. It's got this little character. What was the whole process? The first step on it. I put two or three coats of lacquer the issue out. I did as much oil penetration as I could. And I put four coats of white bond poly. And I did my little dimple dab thing here. It was the spray pile, not the white pile stuff. I don't want as much to fill those things up. And then I sanded it with the, 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 the 600 grit. And I still wound it, and it gave it a light bulb. So it's a bit more matte than the other. This one I did separately. This has got, uh, this probably just got a white pile. Now, one, I want to go through a little bit later about the pile. I've had problems with blood glue. There's enough oils in blood glue. Sometimes it doesn't cure with it. But it stays sticky for a long time. 
get to be worried, will it ever cure? And, uh, what I did was, it was spotty, so I took uh, a little bit of sandpaper to it, and I scrubbed it with half. They were all partially hung our stuff off. And then I put another coat on there, and it did well. Now, what you can also do, is put a little hand dryer in there, and boost it the uh, curing cable. I've used uh, I stayed a little tacky on it, wipe off with normal uh, spirits, then put a little on. Uh, I've got a very small space heater. He, he's talking about curing his heat. Yeah, adding some heat to it to speed the cure. But this is if, if it stays tacky, very small little space heater for. You know, a couple of hours will do the job. Don't cut a space in your own if you can still smell solid. If you're asking for a fire. Yeah. This one, next one on my list is the square bowl. I'm going to talk about that. <coughs> this is Murado. It's a rose wood. Uh, this just has wax on it. I buffed it with the 3M uh, stuff. Murado. It's a rose wood. Well, it's also a really rose wood. Uh, no finish on here, it's wet. <coughs> and what's easy, number two, it does a real nice job. I'm really happy with this in this case. So it says you don't have to use finish. I'm adding a, uh, a varnish finish that would not have helped it at all. Maybe it would have made a little more water proof. But none of, these, none of these finishes are truly waterproof. They're kind of water resistant. They might not you apply the wax. Did you apply it while it was spinning? No, I just really just wipe it on. Just wipe it on on the camera. And in fact, this, I didn't even buy. You really can't get the bottom here, don't you? Yeah, that's right. You didn't use hand it. That's right off your tool, right? What's that? <laughs> well, don't I wish? <laughs> I'm a long ways from that. You start down with 60 grip, do you This is our, I think I did this at, uh, I may have done this at, uh, Alan did a workshop on globe ornaments, a workshop a long time ago. I think this is one of the one I did. It's Bartolo Burrow. It's, it's, uh, I'm not sure what stains you use, but I uh, use his dyes. Uh, like I said before, on ornaments like this, I like to have gloss. Like you like can see that up in the tree with all those lights bouncing off of it. And I don't think that's the place to try and show off the wood, although naturally the, the, the burrow gives you the, the interest of uh, taking the dye uh, in different depths. And this is a piece of, I think it's probably burnt from maple. And I spray it, it's all spray black. Done separately and then do it together. Spray it separately? Yeah. I, I find that if I don't, then it kind of fills in corners here and, and ruins the crispness of the interface. You can, you can see the meniscus of the parent and the finish. And then a uh, light sanding, and then uh, the two stage of the beetle. Uh, Triple E white diamond, and uh, I probably did the print off the wax on that. So it can be the The other ornament is this guy. This, I, before I started, these, these uh, sea urchin shells are beautiful and interesting, but fragile. They, they, they will break all too easy. And what I like to do is put this, it's called triple thick blaze. This is two dollars and seventy-nine cents for the three dollars at, at Walmart. It's just a thicker, thicker approach. Uh, it smells like the lack of some big And I spray the, spray this guy before I assemble it. And then these are done certainly on the way. These I do with friction polish. You say the spray gives the strength and strength? Yes. Yeah. 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 It, it doesn't does appear that it does, yeah, but cool. they're so fragile to start out with. Anything will help. And, and, it, and it does. And actually, I even tried to get some on the inside, too. Right? It's limited ability to do that because it's cold. But this is done with friction polish and uh, uh, right back to the exhaust you see it. And uh, I'm all the wax and the gears. And hard goes like, like this is purple hard. Take that best. Mm -hmm. I 
Four minutes of time. Four minutes of time. Four minutes of time. Five minutes. Four minutes of time. Five minutes. Problematic because, especially the girls, because uh, I find these contours, if I'm not really careful, I will get a tear out of the ring, especially when you do these contours. Now, people were better than I do that without making them this way. This one had such character to it, I left it with just the, uh, two, or, two or three coats of the oil poly mix. And a white buffing and then wax. It gave it more of a matte finish. It's a bit more elegant in a way. Uh, it's, this has got enough shine so you can see the contours. So it's not dead flat, but it's not shiny. I don't think it works well, especially well on girls. Um, girls are problematic in that all that swirling makes it hard to cut it smoothly. You you between the pieces, you get these pores on it. Girl takes, and, and if you do a, a, a matte, more matte finish you have, the less that shows. You make it real glossy, and all of those little fits show. So that, that's a benefit in addition to the, oh, the art value of matte finish. It has a practical value for that. Any questions so far? Do you use it for the non carrying ones? No. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that. I've lost them so many You can use mineral oil on a bowl. Yeah, mineral oil. use. Uh, so I don't. I don't know. I'm really happy with the Mahoney stuff. You know, it's slow curing, but it cures well with a week or two. You put it outside the sunlight, it cures faster. I bet it would. It says on the bottle that it cures faster with only the violet. I didn't know that. That's, that's probably good. Buy a plant bulb at the hardware store and make a little box to put it in. Now, when I do the oil poly mix, like all, I, I always wipe off the excess. I don't need to sit there and cook. So, in that case, I'm not going to be able to finish. It makes it really hard to have uh, dust nibs show up because it's so thin. Now, problems. The mix about the tear out, uh, you have a couple options. You can resand it, depending on how, how much it is. What it looks like is a, is a ring of gouges around there. Well, you can't cover that up no matter what you do to fit it. So you probably need to be it or you it. You can add more coats of some higher aggressive finish to kind of fill them up. Obviously, that's got some limitations and has a loss artistically, but you can't do that and finish so well. So these are the one of the trade offs. Uh, you can consider a less sheen approach, like I talked about here, so it don't show up so well, especially on girls. Those are the three possibilities right there. Uh, uneven uh, la uh, layers and runs, that's really a simple uh, communication of how to two thin thick coats. Thin coats are magic. Thin coats evenly applied are, are the magic of finishing. Especially if you're not going to wipe it off, which automatically evens it out into that. But, uh, I didn't, didn't have any problem on this one. This, this, this one, I missed a gap here in the second coat of the seat. So I had to add it. You know what? This hands out just fine. Uh, poor adhesion. Especially the oily woods, like the uh, blood wood. I found a boutique. Well, I haven't turned the teeth, so I don't know. A number of those inhibit the curing. Somehow it slows down the drying action. Maybe, maybe it chemically interferes with the dryers. But it'll stay sticky for a long time. And an interesting thing. I found that I like to sign my my, uh, my pieces with uh, burgundy in. Some woods, a piece of cherry I have, all the way around where I burned it, it left some kind of product in that, that burning, uh, in the wood. But all around that, it wouldn't cure. No matter what I did, I take a little sand, all of a sudden it'd be a dull spot, exactly more around that signature. So what I did was I gave it a good, good steel wool sand, and then I, I scrubbed it heck out of that with uh, with uh, net. Try and get away. Whatever those things were, get them off that surface. And then finish it with that problem. What's going on here? A lot. You have to scratch the back of the 